please, sir. That gets my gold. Oh, hi. Hey, this is Rich Outfield. <laughs> and Big Anklevich. Welcome to That Gets My Goat again. Yeah. So Pirates of the Caribbean 3, 4, it didn't do that well, actually. Yeah. But we talked about, and I think we talked about it on the show, this summer is so jam-packed of movies. And every year, they leave all these movies for the summer. They have their tentpole picks. But sometimes there's not enough days. You'll get one on Wednesday and one opens on Friday or two open on Friday kind of thing. And if you don't hit your mark on the weekend or the, you know, the first night of the weekend, right. then you're forgotten. And I think that Pirates has been relegated to that pile of... If you haven't seen it already, don't bother. Yeah. There are other movies clamoring for your attention. Came and went. Um, but I, I think it's worth seeing. We here have like second-run theaters, and it's definitely worth seeing at a second-run theater. I've heard people say that it was absolute crap, that it was you know Batman and Robin wow, really? of the Pirates series. I don't agree with that. There were still moments that were really good. The mermaid stuff was really good. That alone is worth seeing. Yeah, I really liked that in just the trailer. I keep seeing that going thinking, wow, that looks cool. And, and that's a shame because the trailer sort of gave away what was going on with the mermaids. In the movie itself, there's a big, long buildup. And you kind of hear them before you see them. Of the, you know, oh, kind of thing. Oh, keep singing! <laughs> and but, is what mermaids do, except for the one who lost her voice to get legs. But because I had seen that trailer, I knew that they were evil. And so, you know, it's just like, okay, come on, quit screwing around. And one comes up, and of course she's this gorgeous chick, and she sings probably two verses of a song. Really? You know, they, they grind it to a halt so that she can sing, you know, what would I give to <laughs> live where you are, <laughs> I, jumping fences and dodging trees. Wait, that's a, a different movie, sorry. Trying to get away... Contemplating nothing but escape. Wait a minute. Hanging out with <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow. Walking along down those. Well, what's that word again? So she sings this song. And then when I guess everybody's guard is down after being entranced by this song, then, you know, she shows her true colors and, and they all attack. But had that not been in the trailer, that would have been a really cool scare. And also the tension of what are her intentions would have mm -hmm. been really strong. The tension of her intentions. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a writer, folks. <laughs> but Pirates wasn't all that successful, and it's gone. And the next movie uh, that we wanted to see after that was uh, X-Men First Class. So I think we'll talk about that because that one you did see. I did see that one, yes. I, uh, I was sitting next to you in the handicap seats again. I like those seats. Those are really <laughs> good spots. And again, if somebody in a wheelchair or something came up, I would be ha – well, I wouldn't be happy. But I would exit those. Yeah, I would definitely get up and let them have it. But uh, yeah, they are nice because they got good leg room. Although before the movie started, there was a lot of folks walking back and forth in front of us and the leg room wasn't so nice. But um, I did see that one. So I am able to offer uh, – I, I don't know if my opinion can be considered insightful or educated ever, but – you know, at least it's an informed opinion. Because you've seen it, yeah. yeah. And I've always been, well, not always, but ever since I was old enough to look around and recognize hypocrisy, I've always been of the mind that you shouldn't be able to criticize something unless you actually know about it, unless you've seen it, unless you you know, at least tried. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're telling me that something is bad because somebody somewhere said that it was bad and you heard somebody third person recounting of, of it being bad, that's not the same as saying, I saw it. Right. That was bad. And uh, I, I don't know why I'm talking about that. X-Men First Class was not bad. Yeah, I don't think so either. I liked it a lot. And uh, if I don't know if you want to go first. Usually I run these things, so you, you go ahead. I thought it was pretty good uh, myself. It was interesting way back when X-Men first came out. Now, I didn't see the first X-Men film in the theater. You didn't? I hadn't become a comic book geek yet at the time. I remember, I think it was probably the same week that X-Men 2 was coming out that I finally went and rented X-Men 1 for the first time and I watched it and I thought, wow, that was a pretty good film. I'm excited to see the second movie. And I had a friend that was a comic book geek and I talked with him and he was telling me what he knew about the X-Men. And so I went into the second movie somewhat informed because all I knew of the X-Men before that were some vague memories of having seen the cartoon that used to come out on Saturday mornings in the, I think it was the early 90s that it came out. And I could, you know, only vaguely remember, I, I did remember Sentinels and a thing or two, 
But yeah, I, you know, I'd never even heard of Jean Grey before the X-Men films came out. I had no idea who a lot of these characters were. But when I went and saw X-Men 2, I was blown away by how good it was. And uh, that little bit of knowledge that uh, my comic book geek friend had given me allowed me to understand, for example, when you see the phoenix under the water at the end of the film and and so forth. And I just thought, oh, (laughs) when that movie ended, I was so stoked to see the Dark Phoenix saga. And I I was just really excited to about X-Men and I became a big fan and because of that film I went out and I can trace all my comic book geekiness that I now have back to that film X-Men 2 was what set me off and since then I've gone and seen basically all the comic book films when they come out you know so I'm kind of a big fan of X-Men and I after seeing that film I went and started getting comic books from the library you know they had graphic novels and I would just get an X-Men novel and and go and read that and I would uh, I started getting them from the bookstore and buying them myself and so I came to learn all about X-Men and and so forth so it was really cool with this movie because you get to see all new X-Men they're X-Men that are from the comic books they're not invented or anything like that but you now get to see a, a whole new set of folks although Angel that girl Angel is she somebody that's been around forever because I don't recognize her is that one that you know Grant Morrison. Uh. Grant Morrison is an X-Men writer from around the time of the first X-Men movie that came in and sort of revamped the X-Men, and a lot of people just love what he and Frank Whiteley Uh did. I am not among them. (laughs) I do remember vaguely the girl with the fairy wings. I don't remember her blowing fire or whatever. I don't either. And I don't remember her being named Angel either. Was she named Angel? Yeah, she was Angel. Because Angel's kind of already taken, isn't it? Many times over. I think Angel was actually her first name. Yeah. And I don't know what had become of Warren Worthington Angel. But yeah, she was happy to take it over. Seems to me like a much better name for that girl would have been Dragonfly. Oh, that's not because bad. Because she had wings like a dragonfly, and she blew fire. She spit fire, which dragons are known to do. Mm. Would have been much better, but oh well. I didn't write it, so I can't complain. Or wait, I can complain all I want. I think that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have complained a great deal uh, about this in the previews. And, you know, I, there was that last trailer where suddenly I thought, you know, this might be good. I, uh, But still, it wasn't enough to get me thinking that it would be. Right. Yeah, that was definitely something that I went to this film with as opposed to other films in the X-Men universes. I wasn't expecting a lot from it. So whatever it gave me was going to be a positive. Well, whatever positive it gave me was going to be a pleasant surprise instead of, oh, that wasn't enough to satisfy me. As it was for Wolverine and as it was for X-Men 3. I was expecting a lot out of those. Yeah, understandably so, I think. And a lot of people seem to have, uh, I don't want to say given up on the X-Men franchise, but soured on the X-Men. This one, we're recording it the same week that it came out, and it didn't do well. It didn't do as well as the 2000 X-Men did in its opening. I don't know what you say about that. That at least had Halle Berry in it, I guess, but... She yeah, wasn't a big star at that point, though. She was the big star in that. Right, but she wasn't a big star yet at that point. She still hadn't become the woman that they would cast as Catwoman and expect that to do something good for a piece of crap film. Although, yeah, I don't know how she ever became a big star, because what did she ever do that was big other well, than X-Men? Bond, well, she was a Bond girl, and there was also, she won an Oscar. Right, the Oscar, but nobody sees Oscar films. Here and there, you get a couple where they're... I guess uh, didn't the King's Speech wind up making more than $100 million in the end? It did. But, uh, that I mean, how many people saw Gods and Monsters? Wait. Well, nobody did, but... That was the film, right? Or was it just Mons? Gods and Monsters was the one Ian McKellen was nominated for. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was thinking the one that she was in that she got... Oh, Monsters Ball as well. Monsters. How many people saw Monsters Ball? Well, everybody Wasn't... saw one minute of it. <laughs> Just one of those, uh, you know, like most uh, Oscar-nominated films, they're all small films, and that's why I think a lot of the reason why uh, ABC is always like, oh, how are we going to get ratings up for Oscars? Nobody's interested because nobody's seen any of the movies. Every year you hear something like that. Was she a big star from anything else? Swordfish? 
Swordfish was after X Men. She was paid a lot for that, if you recall. Right. Uh, well, she was like a Revlon wo- girl, woman, whatever you want to call it. She was famous because she was attractive. Yeah, I think that's she was just... in a lot of. I mean, like people saw Bullworth and that, but they didn't see it because of Halle Berry. No, I don't. I didn't even know she was in that. I don't know when she became the star. I guess it was when she got the Oscar, but she also had two X Men movies in her back pocket right, when she did by the then. Oscars. But, uh, you know, I mean, Patrick Stewart was also a recognizable star. Right. But, you know, just to Star Trek fans, I don't know that anybody remembers him as the bad guy in Conspiracy Theory or anything like that. But by the time (laughs) X-Men 2 came out, all of those people were stars because of X-Men or in Ian McKellen's case because of The Lord of the Rings. Right. And and Hugh Jackman was a star immediately. As soon as that movie came out. Because of X-Men. And rightly so, though. Hugh Jackman was really, yeah. really good as Wolverine, and it'll be interesting to see when they cast a new Wolverine somewhere down the line, yeah. if people are okay with it, like they were with something that they were actually uh, okay with. If people are okay <laughs> with it, like they were with like Val Kilmer as Batman or, or Christian Bale as Batman, or if it'll be like George Lazenby as James Bond, and it's like, no, absolutely not kind of thing. It'll, it'll be interesting to see that. I mean, I mean or hopefully I won't be around to see that. It would be nice <laughs> to see Hugh Jackman be Wolverine yeah, for a him, while. Yeah, they were going to do a sequel to Wolverine, weren't they not? Or is that? They still are. Uh, it was the one set in Japan, though, uh-huh. and they had a start date for that. And then something happened in Japan, oh. and they decided to not go ahead. And so Darren Aronofsky, who was going to direct it, dropped out. Ostensibly, they're going to have another director come through, and apparently the script is really strong. Christopher McQuarrie wrote it, and uh, it's based on the Frank Miller, Chris Claremont right. limited series. And so hopefully it'll be good. It's just the last one, Wolverine, didn't make all that much money. And then this one, First Class, made even less so I don't know that they'll be scrambling to make Wolverine right. or scrambling could, to make Deadpool. Could be the death knell. That's a that's a funny thing because it was a really good movie and yet it didn't do well. And so you're, you're torn. If, if a, a sequel is really terrible and you're like, well, okay, of course the series died. You know, Batman and Robin came out. F Batman or whatever it is. But if it just happens to happen, you know, if it's a good movie and it came out on a bad time... I don't know why X-Men 4 or 5 or 1 or whatever this is called, First (laughs) Class, didn't do well. Because the week before, Kung Fu Panda 2 came out. And it had the advantage of being in 3D, whereas Kung Fu Panda 1 wasn't. And yet... Still did worse. It didn't do well. And is it because people are tired of it? Is it because people have other things to do? Is it because there's too much competition? Is it that you know, people are no longer willing to pay the 3D? Uh, I, I, I'm not. I, I don't know on X-Men. I don't believe X-Men was available in 3D. It was also available in 2D, though. Right. <laughs> As are we. And, and another thing that was... Uh, Whoa, it, okay. It, you no, know no, what? no. There was a no. scene... Hold but on, her tits is, were... Well, yes, they were. But we're, we're going to use that as a teaser because uh, we've been talking for a little while. And get my goats episodes aren't supposed to be so long. So we're, why don't we cut it off here? And uh, we'll save some more for the folks uh, when they come back. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Well, thanks for listening, folks. I'm Big Anklevich. I'm Rich Outfield. Good night. See you next week. I guess my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. So there.